let's just uh, get this video out of the way. It was a great fight last Saturday with uh, Vladimir Klitschko versus Anthony Joshua. Um, I've been looking at some of the newspapers, magazines and that, and they're saying it's the fourth best fight people have seen in heavyweight history behind the likes of the Thriller Manila and the Rumble in the Jungle and I can't remember if it was a fight of the century was number one or three or whatever so you know, that's that's great um, but uh, yes of course I was a I'm a massive Vladimir Klitschko fan and I was I was gutted on Saturday I, I remember a lot of the predictions before this fight and what people were saying um, I was very genuinely confident Vladimir would win this fight right back in November when they were first talking about this happening and I remember a lot of people that have YouTube channels and, and whatnot were making Vladimir Klitschko favourite in the fight and when it came closer and closer to the fight I couldn't believe how disingenuous some people were when they were suddenly picking Anthony Joshua or saying it was a 50-50 fight when I thought when it was a run up to this fight that Vladimir Klitschko, to me, looked even more the favourite going into this fight. First press conference, Vladimir Klitschko looked in great shape. I'm not saying that's the best thing for him to be that far out from the actual fight night, but what that showed was tremendous motivation he still had at that age. And um, I think he was uh, mentally dominating Anthony Joshua in any press conferences and head-to-head uh, -head and anything like that. I mean... Vladimir Klitschko looked like the stronger person mentally in this fight. He looked like the most motivated person in this fight. And, you know, I thought Anthony Joshua was the perfect opponent for Vladimir Klitschko to beat. He didn't move around like Tyson Fury. He didn't move around like Brian Jennings. He was there to be hit. And so, right up until the 11th round, it wasn't until Vladimir Klitschko got knocked down the second time in the 11th round that I actually got worried that he was going to lose the fight. Um, right from the start, I thought Vladimir Klitschko was, was going to win. I thought that um, Vladimir Klitschko was making Anthony Joshua fight his fight. I mean, if you want to go by the, the scoring of the fight, I had the first round a draw. Anthony Joshua winning the next three rounds. For the fifth fight, Anthony Joshua knocks down Vladimir Klitschko. Then Vladimir Klitschko rallies and uh, took the end of the round. And I scored that a 9-8 round to Vladimir Klitschko. And then I had Vladimir Klitschko dominating from the 6th to the 8th round. And then I had Vladimir winning the 9th and the 10th round. So I was very confident Vladimir Klitschko was winning this fight right into the 11th round. Um, and yeah, I was gutted. I was gutted because I thought at the age of 41, when your speed and your reflexes are undoubtedly in decline, I mean, it's just undeniable that there was no choice but for people to give him the respect he deserved for winning that fight. You know, to be at 41, it's a really hard for people to say that, um, even though I had my doubts that Vladimir Klitschko was going to get the credit he deserved for winning this fight, because, just like I said in my video before this, I could already hear what people were going to say about Anthony Joshua if Vladimir Klitschko won this fight. I thought he would eventually, if Anthony Joshua went on to do great things, get the credit he deserves winning this fight at 41. Uh, and it didn't happen. Um, I think um, a lot of people, you know, I feel after the win, I thought to myself, you know, Vladimir Klitschko is not going to get the credit he deserves for his career now, but Anthony Joshua fans are going to be bumming Vladimir Klitschko up to make Anthony Joshua sound and look great. But I didn't expect what people turned around and said after the fight, which was that Vladimir Klitschko was at his very best, and that was Vladimir Klitschko in his prime, and that was the best fight Vladimir Klitschko had ever fought during his career. Just for the fact that Vladimir Klitschko was not clinching as much as usual, and he was fighting this fight more like he was fighting a tall fighter, which he wasn't doing against Tyson Fury. He was fighting more like he fought against Marius Wack. I think back in 2012 and 2013, do I, honestly, do any genuine people, and I won't take anything away from Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua looked better than I expected him to look in this fight. He did raise his levels, 
Uh, I didn't expect Anthony Joshua. I thought Anthony Joshua would have a good chin, uh, above average chin, but he showed he's got very, very good chin. It's going to take not just a power puncher to knock out Anthony Joshua, but a power puncher of accuracy that can land combinations against him to take out Anthony Joshua now, I think. And to be honest, we don't know yet. He might still he might be able to recover and come back and rally and win fights, even if that happens. We just don't know yet. But still, to get back to Vladimir Klitschko, do I think he was at his best in that fight? I think he was at... Um, I think he couldn't be any more motivated than he was for that fight. I think he went in with a great green plan. Um, I think that uh, yeah, Vladimir Klitschko fought the best fight he possibly could at 41 years old. Um, but, no, I don't think he has the speed of the reflexes he used to. I think it's uh, pretty silly to think that he would do it at 41. I had no idea that people would turn around and say that after the fight. I just didn't expect it. But I guess when um, Anthony Joshua had his toughest fight as he'd actually had, the people that are a big fan or are leaning towards Anthony Joshua are going to try and say, or just don't like Vladimir Klitschko, are going to try and say that Vladimir Klitschko was at his peak during that fight. And I guess I was kind of silly to think otherwise, but I guess that's to be expected after a fight like that. So yeah, I've already touched on the scoring for the fight. Um, I thought it was quite the, the scoring was quite criminal, actually. I've heard arguments and read posts and stuff about how it could have been scored a draw up into the eleventh round, and you know I would. I still think that's unfair myself as well, but fair enough. But having Anthony Joshua two rounds ahead, three rounds ahead, I think was was shocking. I think after the sixth round, when Vladimir, as he said, thought he broke Anthony Joshua's concentration and confidence, actually thought that the best thing to do was to just take Anthony Joshua into the later rounds and win by decision or stop him in the 11th or 12th round. Uh, a lot of people are saying that that was an idiotic thing for Vladimir to do. Uh, but after dropping Anthony Joshua with that shot he did in the sixth round, you could see why Vladimir would think, well, maybe Anthony Joshua does actually have a very, very solid chin and I just can't take him out. So it's better to preserve my energy and take him into later rounds and see if I can just stop him then through exhaustion uh, or just get the decision. But uh, I think if I was... When you're fighting in the fight, you can usually feel like if you're actually winning the fight or not. And I think Vladimir Klitschko really felt like he was winning that fight. And I think that's one thing that might put him off taking the rematch is... He had that feeling he was winning the round, he was winning the fight. He had other people viewing the fight as him winning, but he wasn't getting the fair streak in the scorecards. And that's the only worry, well, it's not the only worry I have that Vladimir might not take the rematch. I think Vladimir, when he does look back at the fight, will think to himself that he should have won that fight, that it was his fight to lose going into the later rounds, which I, which I think it was, and I think a lot of people think it was as well. So I think Vladimir being the competitive person that he actually is, and looking back at them tapes and seeing a lot of people think he was winning the fight and it was his fight to actually lose, that he will take the rematch. Because he's 41 years old, it's not like he can try and fight a lower ranked or a few lower ranked opponents in Anthony Joshua and then come back. He actually has to go for this now. Because when you're getting older, when you're passing your 30s, your reflexes and your speed do decline. Um, if, I mean, just look back at Vladimir Klitschko when he was in his early 30s. The speed he had then and the speed he has now. Uh, I know there's other factors in there. Um, his techniques improved dramatically since then. But when you get older, and it was very obvious with Roy Jones Jr. that had actual style, that, and David Hay that had a style that really depended on his speed and reflexes, but when you get older, it just declines slowly and slowly and slowly. And once you just get past this little peak that you can't fight at the top level anymore, then you just can't fight in the top 10 anymore. And then you're just a regular fighter like Roy Jones Jr. that's just in the top 100 in box rec. That's what happens. That's the, the gradual decline of a fighter. It's not an overnight thing. It's a gradual decline. And then you just can't fight the top guys anymore. You can't fight the top 10 guys anymore. And you're just an average, average fighter. 
you just have the average speed and reflexes of a average fighter. And that's where Vladimir Klitschko and me and you and everyone else is heading in life eventually. The positive things for me being a Vladimir Klitschko fan but also being British is this has made Britain more important than it's ever been in boxing right now. Tyson Fury beating Vladimir Klitschko two years ago now and still being relevant because he had some mental health problems, he had some injury issues, um, he had some drug problems. He's still relevant. Um, people are still looking at him and I'm still looking at him as a guy that could be Anthony Joshua. Uh, so and he's still around. He just We need to wait for him to come back, hopefully have another fight before he faces someone like Anthony Joshua. Um, so we've got, we've, Britain's got him around. We've got Anthony Joshua who's saying he's at the top when you have the lineal heavyweight champion Tyson Fury is kind of unfair but people by perception are viewing him as a top fighter right now he had a great historic fight that's ranked in the top five fights of all time as well now so people are really viewing him as the number one guy in the division for very good reasons so to be British and to have two guys around like that right now and to have people like to Chisora, who's always been a, a fringe contender. Uh, Dylan White, who looks like he might not have the technical skills uh, and the defensive skills to be a world champion, but still cause a lot of people a lot of problems and create a lot of exciting fights, like the Derek Chisora fight last year, which I think was the most exciting fight in the heavyweight division last year. Um, you know, David Price is not really going anywhere. We've got Huey Fury who unfortunately, and I don't know the ins and outs of this, never took the fight of Joseph Parker. Um, we have looks like Joseph Parker is actually going to come across to the British um, uh, the British scene now and have some good fights. You know, Britain is looking great. The country I live in is looking amazing for heavyweight boxing right now. So although my, my guy that I really wanted to have a historic win on Saturday lost his fight, it is looking great for British boxing right now. And uh, with me personally doing better, because I had a quite a hard time myself last year and the previous year, um, I'm starting to do a lot better myself. Um, I could actually uh, go down to London and watch some of these great fights um, and probably get some good tickets as well. So uh, it's bad for me that my, my fighter, Vladimir Klitschko, who is my favourite fighter in the world, lost. But um, it's, it's good for Britain and it's good for the fans and we got a great fight. Uh, and now I've made this video, I can now go on and talk about other things in the division which I wanted to actually talk about more than this.